Wisconsin Congressman Mike Gallagher. He serves on the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what are the key provisions of this bill, and can you tell us how it's going to help Ukraine? Well, here we are, almost uh, 2 p.m. here in D.C., and we still don't have the legislative text of the bill. Uh, and given that we are talking about a massive sum of money here, that's a little bit worrying. We need the details. There are certain things that I would like to see in this bill, particularly anti -sh funding for anti-ship missiles, long-range artillery, air defense, vital weapon systems that we know the Ukrainians can use now. There are also things I want to make sure are not in the bill. I don't want the Democrats to attach extraneous, unrelated, quote-unquote, COVID uh, funding to this bill. But we won't know until we have the legislative text. The devil will be in the details. But I do think there is broad bipartisan support for helping the Ukrainians fight more effectively. And I think there is more we can do in order to arm them in their fight against Vladimir Putin's unlawful and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. Well, we do know the president expects COVID aid and the Ukraine aid to move separately to get this through. Uh, but when we see it, to your point, is another question. How important is it, because uh, you talk about air defense, how important is it that Russia so far has not achieved air superiority over Ukraine? And what can the U.S. be doing to sustain that? Well, there are certain uh, air defense systems that we can either provide to the Ukrainians or there are certain uh, assets uh, that our NATO allies have offered to uh, give to the Ukrainians, in many cases old Russian weapon systems that they want to get rid of. I think this actually presents a huge opportunity for us over the long term because if we can simultaneously arm the Ukrainians and help them protect their forces and their civilian population while also then turning around and replacing Russian weapon systems with American weapon systems for our NATO allies, that's a win-win right there. The other opportunity we have is to really revitalize our defense industrial base so that we can start stockpiling munitions. We've blown through seven years worth of Javelin missiles in Ukraine. 30% of our Stinger stockpile. These are missile systems that we are going to need going forward, particularly if we are going to try and help Taiwan defend itself from a prospective Chinese invasion of the island. And that is what really worries me over the next few years. Yeah, I was thinking about asking you that later on in this uh, this interview. There's a big concern right now about depleted stocks um, and how the uh, you know, defense contractors may be partly to blame for that, uh, how the Pentagon budget might be involved in that. How, how do you see us resolving this, and what's our timeline? Well, with some of these missile systems, they have long lead subcomponents. Basically, one-third of any system requires a long lead. So what we need to be doing right now is reforming the way we buy these. So you buy basically two to three sets of the long lead items at one time. So over time, you can start to replenish your stockpile. But we've seen no plan from the Pentagon for doing that. In fact, the Deputy Secretary of Defense uh, recently downplayed the need to replenish our stockpiles. That is completely the wrong message right now. We urgently need to rebuild our stockpiles, and we need to learn the lessons of Ukraine and apply it to Taiwan. And the okay. lesson, in my mind, is that you need to arm your allies right. before the invasion happens. Well, we've run out of time. I appreciate you being on with us, Congressman Gallagher. Uh, love talking to you. Hope to have you back again soon. If there's anything to your point that should highlight the need for a, a supply, it is what we're seeing right now in Russia and Ukraine. Thank you so much.